Hi, so I've been working <coughs> on the film device for a while and doing some simulations and some modelling and some experimentation to try and find out really what was happening. Uh, and to be honest, if there was a better way of doing it. So after a fair deal of work, uh, I came up with this. This is based on the 2001 patent by uh, Pinion Taro and that patent number is uh, 6229422 May the 8th, 2001, if you want to have a look at it. But it's essentially kind of a hybrid between um, Flynn and um, Art Porter and Pinion Taro. Now, it's attached to a, a big old steel block, as you can see, and that steel block is uh, 350 grams. And at the moment, if I pick it up by that device, there you go, handling 350 grams rather comfortably. Uh, it's these two wires that come out of it are just quite simply attached to this battery. And all I have to do is um, touch this to the positive terminal and that magnet will switch off. So just touch it quickly and it is, it is very quickly. There you go. And there's the magnet turned off. Okay, so to have a better look at that. As you can see, it's a coil here with two pole pieces attached to the end of the coil. Now underneath that coil are two magnets, okay? Now at the moment, as you saw, the thing has got no magnetism there at all. So if I take the terminals and swap them round, so you remember I had it at one point to negative and one to positive, now then what was on the negative is on the positive, and what was the positive is now going to touch the negative. And again, you have to be quick with this. And there we go, the magnetism is back. Okay, and that's now gripping and lifting a 350 gram weight. Swap the poles over again. And I hope you can see this, but one single really quick touch. And there you go. Now magnetism is on. And that is so cool. I mean, really, really cool. I'm going to swap it over and start it up again. So I take, the, take it over, swap the terminals over. Quick touch, and <laughs> we're back again. Okay? Now, the thing about this is that magnetism will be retained even if there's no power. So let's disconnect it from the power, and there we go. And it's demagnetism will be retained even with there's no power. <coughs> With the flame device, <coughs> you do the same thing. You touch it very quickly. But once you take the touch away, then the magnetism comes back. With this one, once you take the touch away, whichever state it was in, is it, it stays in that state. So if it was magnetized, when you touch it, you demagnetize it, and it stays demagnetized, it, magnetized, and you reverse the poles and touch it again, and it'll magnetize, and then it stays magnetized, okay? And this thing has under here two rod magnets at two centimeters, and the rod magnets it's got are two of those. Okay, they're two centimeters, centimeters by half a centimeter. And you've obviously got a north and a south. One of them under here is um, an Alnico magnet, which is what this one is. And the other one's a Neo magnet, an N42. And they're faced so that you have a north, south, north, south face to them. And you put on the pole pieces on, onto the ends of the magnets like that, wrap a coil around it, and that's what you end up with. Now, because they're north, south, north, south, and they have a couple of rather chunky looking keepers at the end there, no magnetism escapes at all. But when you put Alnico, which is a um, permanent magnet, but is quite easy to demagnetize and remagnetize in the opposite direction, when you put that in the uh, electric field, and the electric field is opposite to the magnets, it swaps the magnets around. So what was north-south becomes south-north. And because of that, um, the two north poles face each other, two south poles each, face each other, and the flux escapes from the pole pieces that we've got there and turns it into a very strong permanent magnet. Reverse the polarity of the current, do the same thing again, and you demagnetize, remagnetize the Alnico magnet in the reverse direction, in which case the flux then runs contained entirely within the pole pieces, and at the faces of the pole pieces you get no magnetism at all. Now, the reason this vaguely reminds me of um, Art Porter is because he has a, actually quite a similar situation in that he has his, his magnet and then he's got a piece of steel on the end of that magnet and then a coil around that steel. It flips on a current for a brief moment and something occurs called magnetic shielding. 
uh, and then uh, another magnet out here is attracted to the magnet. He turns off the current, and because um, the two magnets are now in like pole positions, it's forced back, and you get the backwards and forwards going on there. Now, when you, get a sim you would get a similar thing here. In the moment, of course, this is a piece of steel, and there's no magnetism in it. The flux is contained in here. So any other magnet that's brought close to that is just going to be attracted to it. Uh, what, the heck, what did I do with that other magnet? Oh, here we go. Here's one. And it's just going to sit on it. You see, it's attracted to it. Okay? And now if I touch those again and bother to um, turn it on, they would be repelled away. Pretty much in the same way that our porters did. Uh, and it reminds me of Flynn <coughs> because of the um, flux switching that's going on here. But unlike the Flynn, it, it's a permanent flux switching. Now, this coil has got 150 turns on it and it's uh, 24 SWG, I believe. And the resistance of this is 1.1 ohms. And what that means is when you connect it to a 12 volt battery, what goes through there for the few uh, microseconds that you touch it is 10 amps. So you're banging 10 amps through there. Um, and again, literally for, for a few microseconds, I think 100 microseconds will do it. Um, but that means there's about 13.1 uh, millijoules of energy going into this. So that's what that is required to swap that magnet around. And the um, amount of energy required to swap the magnet is obviously related to the Alnico that you're using because you need enough energy to overcome the Al Alnico magnet field and reverse it. And it appears that on this particular one it's about 13 millijoules that'll do that. So we're looking at an input energy of 13 millijoules. Uh, and it's not particularly well made, obviously, I made this in the shed. Um, so there's uh, quite a lot of work and interesting work that's been done on the Flynn that I, I feel could equally be done on, on that little device there. Okay, so the, the benefit of this, really, is uh, it's much, much simpler to construct than the Flynn device. Much simpler and much cheaper as well, because there's uh, only one magnet and one coil instead of uh, two rather chunky magnets, four coils with some great big bits of steel. So it's much cheaper to construct, it's much simpler to construct, uh, and personally I think this state of magnetism, demagnetism being permanent as a state is desirable, rather than having that um, brief uh, interruption in the magnetism. Here you get a permanent setup that you can swap around. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Any questions, feel free to mail me. I'm probably going to play around with that for quite a bit because that's quite a lot of fun. So I'm probably going to do some simulations on it and, and see what we get. But there we go. There's a sort of Flynn-Porter hybrid, if you like.